Hey there, Daniel from Voicetail. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through one of the core skills that you're gonna to need to develop as you build out more AI agents. And that's debugging common issues. So we're gonna go over a couple common issues in this video. The first one is what happens if a user says something that your system isn't necessarily prepared to handle. The second one is how do you debug logic when your logic isn't working as expected and you're not sure if you're filling the right variables or capturing the right variables. And the third one is we're gonna go over how to optimize and improve the intents or the triggers in your project. So for example, I've got a talk to sales trigger here, but what happens if a user says something that should match there but doesn't, how do I fix that? The topic that we're not gonna cover on this call is how to optimize your knowledge base. So if you're sending a question to the knowledge base and it's not responding the way that you want or it's not responding the right way, we should have an entirely separate video on that since it's, it requires a deep understanding of how the knowledge base works. And you can find that link up top. So with that, let's get started. So we're gonna start off with the first problem of what happens if a user says something that your assistant isn't really prepared to handle. And so in my assistant here, I've got my flow, which is uh, right on the canvas here. So that's just welcoming back a first a user. It gives them two options. They can get support, talk to sales. And in the knowledge base, I've got a bunch of documents about voice flow. So let's go ahead and run a quick test to, to try this. So let's say a user says something like, I want a sandwich. Now, I don't have anything in my project um, that can answer this. There's also nothing in the documentation about sandwiches. And so you see that the assistant says, sorry, I didn't get that. Please try again. Now, why is the assistant saying this and where is it coming from? Voice has a pretty strict hierarchy when it captures a question that it's looking to answer with that information. The first one is it looks locally. So at this step, is there an intent or a trigger that matches what the user said? So in this case, these are just buttons. There's no triggers attached to them. So the answer is no. The second thing it's going to do is it's going to look globally to say, OK, is there um, you know, another a, a trigger about a sandwich in your project, right? So if a user says, I want support, or a user says, talk to sales, it'll jump to one of these triggers. But you can see there's nothing about sandwiches here. There's also nothing about sandwiches in my docs, so um, it goes to the next step. The next one is it says, okay, now we're in what we call a no match path. So there's nothing in my project that relates to sandwiches, so now how do I handle a no match? The first thing that it does is it looks in the knowledge base to say, can I answer this question with the information in the knowledge base? So if I go ahead back here and I ask it something like, what are the different steps in voice flow? I don't know, I obviously don't have an intent around that, but it's gonna actually send a question to the knowledge base and then come back with an answer. And then if I turn on my debug mode here, which I always recommend doing, you can see that um, it looked at the NLU, it couldn't find anything in the project, and then it actually looked and it sent it to the knowledge base and it actually responded with an answer. That's the next step. But if it still doesn't have an answer in the knowledge base, so in the case of you know, what toppings do you have on your sandwiches or what uh, do I want on my sandwich, it's gonna look through the project, it's gonna look at the knowledge base, and it's gonna say, sorry, I didn't get that, please try again. And that's because in your global settings here, you can see that there is a setting called global no match. And so this is what it's gonna do if it can't find an answer anywhere in your project and if it can't find it in the knowledge base, it's gonna to go to the global no match. So you can set this to be static, which is you can set a message here, sorry, I didn't get that, please try again, or you can set it to be generative. So you can just have whatever they're saying go right to an AI model. Now, I wouldn't really recommend this because if a user is just spamming your bot or just sending things, it's gonna be actually answering them. But if you did wanna be able to have a more human experience where you know a bot could say anything, so if someone asks what color is the sky and it'll be able to answer, you can turn on generative no match. And so this will mean that the conversation with uh, your user will never have a canned bot message. It'll always have a message that's either prepared or uh, actually is powered by an AI model, similar to if you were chatting with ChatGPT and had all of your data uploaded. And so if I go generative, and I go back here and I try this again and I say, uh, what toppings do you offer on sandwiches? You can see that again, it's gonna run through all those steps. So nothing in the project, nothing in the, in the knowledge base. And then it's gonna use the generative AI match. AI, the generative no match, which says, I'm an AI assistant. I can't talk about sandwiches. Go check with the sandwich shop. So um, that's how the no match path works. Now there's a couple things you can do here is that if you want to maybe handle a no match locally on this step, you can also add a no match path. So in the settings for this button step, you can say no match and add this manually. And now this will manually provide a no match to the user. So it will look locally to say, can I answer this with the buttons available? It'll look and say, is there a trigger on your canvas that matches this? 
and then it'll say, let me ask, ask the KB. If not, let me take the local no match or let me take the global no match. And so those are all the different hierarchies that you can do. Another thing you can do as well is if you, um, you know, don't want it to look anywhere else in your project, on this step in the settings, you see that there's something called intense scoping. So you can say only listen to intense on this step as well, and that will disable it from looking globally at triggers in your project. So there's quite a different number of different ways to handle a no match response, but that gives you a good sense of like what all of the different levels are. So the next example is what happens if a user types something that should go to an intent but doesn't. So if I some type in something like give me a demo, you can see that, that this should go to the talk to sales intent, but instead it's going to our KB fallback. Still gives the user a decent answer from our, our documentation, but really it should actually go to the talk to sales intent here um, because this is what I would want, right? If someone wants to get in touch with sales, um, they, should, they should go here. And so to figure out why that's happening, the first thing you can do um, is actually turn on something called intent confidence. So I'm going to say, give me a demo. And if I go to my settings here, I can turn on intent confidence. And you can see that it actually matched to the none intent. So the AI and the NLU were determining that I don't have anything in my project that matches this. So what I want to do, and this is really useful when you actually have your assistant live as well, you can go to your transcripts and you can see that um, you know someone said something that didn't match anywhere, is you can do two things. One of them is you can either add, you know, add this utterance to an intent. So if I click here and say talk to sales, it's actually going to add it as an example of one of the things in talk to sales. Or I can go ahead and actually modify this from the intent setting itself. So if I go talk to sales here, um, I can start adding in uh, new uh, options. So I can say like, you know, get a demo. Um, and now this is going to better train the model to recognize if someone says demo as well, they mean this. And you can also deep beef up this description. So the way that this works is that it looks at all of the utterances first to determine what's most similar in your project. And then it passes that to an AI model to look at the descriptions. So I might say, or the user wants to receive uh, a demo of the product. So this is how you go about optimizing your intents or your AI model after you actually launch your assistant. One thing I'd recommend is always kind of look through the transcripts and make sure you can actually review them and improve your agent over time so it can better train itself to recognize what users are asking. Final thing is debugging logic. So here I've got logic that's looking if the first name variable has any value. Now, if I run my project, uh, you can notice that you know, it doesn't actually go down this path ever. And if I'm wondering why, and I take a look at the debug mode, uh, it shows me what's going on behind the scenes. So the first thing is that I'm getting an API error. So this API is giving a 403 error, which means it's not working properly or it's missing something. Next, it's changing the first name variable from zero to undefined, which means that it's got no, no value to it. And so when it goes to my logic, it says no conditions matched, taking the else path. So I've got an else path in my logic, so that's why it's going down here. So obviously to fix this, I'm going to need to fix a couple things. The first one is I need to fix this API request. There's nothing in here. That's why it's failing. But this is really helpful if you do have API calls in your project to make sure that you are routing them somewhere in case they fail um, or handling variables that don't get filled. The other way to do it is when you hit run, you can also pull out this little knob on the side and you can see what the variables look like as they get filled in real time. So if I hit run test, you can see that this first name variable um, is actually zero. Right here, um, it's got a zero value. So this isn't actually being filled with anything, which is why my logic is going down this path. Now, this is useful if you have logic that's based on like information that you're capturing. When you run a test, you can see if it's actually capturing the right information and storing in the variable, or if for some reason maybe um, uh, the logic is uh, not exactly matching. So logic in Voiceful is case sensitive. So you're going to want to make sure that whatever variable you're catching in the logic itself um, has the same case or, or is exactly the same. And you also want to make sure that you, in your logic, you add in a no match path. So a no match path is what happens if your conditions aren't met. And if you don't have a no match path, then your conversation will end. So for example, if I didn't have a no match path here, uh, and I ran this, because the first name doesn't have any value, it's just going to end the conversation. So it's important that whenever you have logic, you add a no match path just to create a path for what happens if your conditions aren't met, just to be able to debug or handle any edge cases within your project. So those are the most common issues that we see with VoiceFlow as you're building your assistant. Um, again, if you have any trouble, I would always recommend uh, hitting up our in-app assistant, Tico, or going to our Discord to get some help from other users as well.